Hello. For this video, we're going to be working with two-dimensional splines. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you've completed the other assignment, um, you'll note that there's two ways to really begin work inside of 3ds Max. One is to start with a primitive object, uh, a simple box or sphere or cylinder that's located right over here. Um, you can start with one of those primitive shapes and then create a 3D model out of it. For most of your projects, that's probably how we'll begin. Most of the time, that's how I begin with a lot of my models. But I want to show you all a really cool couple of really cool tricks and tools that can sometimes be used to create models that would be otherwise really difficult to make. Uh, so while we can create most things out of these primitive objects, the second little button over here underneath the Create tab, so you can see again, if we're looking at the interface, we're over here in our command panel, we're going to be underneath that first tab, which is a little plus sign, which is the Create tab, and then the second button over, which is Splines. So now, here are the two dimensional shapes we can use inside of 3ds Max. We can also bring in two dimensional shapes that we've drawn in a vector drawing graphics program like Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop. Um, both of those can be used in conjunction with some of the tricks we're going to do today to create some really cool, very complex 3D models that would be otherwise incredibly difficult to make. So you can see, just like our primitive objects on the first button, the second button has all of our two-dimensional shapes. So here you can see things like line, circle, arc, and gone. And end gone is basically whatever number of side polygon you give it. You can see down here sides. You can change it as low as three. And I'm sure there's a limit on how high, but I haven't, I don't know if I went up that high myself, um, to whatever size polygon kind of shape you want to make. Text, which again is a fun one. You can use to type in whatever you like and create a 3D text of it. Now, one really cool trick with text, this will work with any font installed on your system. So what's really neat about that is if you install things like uh, fun graphical fonts like Celtic Knotwork or uh, fun patterns or even fun shapes, you can bring them in and turn them into 3D models like this. So I've done that, for example, creating some really great filigree work on 3D models by finding some really cool like Celtic knotting like font, typing in whatever letters make the shapes I like and then turning it into 3D pretty easily. So uh, as easy as really as hitting adding one modifier. So you can see here. Uh, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna use the line tool, I think, to begin with. Um, now, the, the key thing about using two-dimensional shapes is you don't wanna be using them in the perspective view. This is our three-dimensional view, and we're working with a two-dimensional shape, so we wanna stick to these three kind of uh, other viewports for working with two-dimensional shapes. Now we'll modify it in 3D later, but when we're creating them, we want to stick to these. Because it's a two-dimensional shape, if we create it in our perspective viewport, funky weird things can happen. We want to keep 2D shapes flat until we're completely done with them. Um, so with my line tool, I'm going to simply draw a shape. Now for this project we're creating a 3D lamp. Um, I'm going to start by creating the body of my lamp. Now your lamp can be any shape or design you want. In fact if you look around and find lamp pictures you'll see lamps come in all kinds of shapes. So I'm going to simply take my line tool and I'm going to go up here in my front or my left view would be okay. I wouldn't want to necessarily do the top or my lamp would be on the side but I'm going to do my lamp either again in front or left is fine and I'm going to draw a line with my line tool. Now, this line tool is tricky to work with. So I'm warning you right out the gate, it is not super friendly, it is not super easy to work with. It's very similar to the pen tool in something like Photoshop or Illustrator, but not quite as user friendly. So again, I've taken lines I've drawn in Photoshop or Illustrator and brought them in, because sometimes it's easier to use one of those programs, because the pen tool is a little bit easier to work with. So the one thing I'll show you is that when you press, when using the line tool, it creates a sharp edge line. And when you click and drag, it creates a bezier curve, so a curved line. It's way easier to create something that's close to the shape you want and then to modify it later than it is 
to try to modify it while drawing. And this has been pretty much the fundamental difference I found inside of Max versus something like Illustrator or Photoshop. So I'm just going to create a basic shape. So if I just click once, you can see, notice it's a nice straight line. Again, I didn't click and drag, I just clicked. For this next one, I will click and drag. Notice it's creating that Bezier curve. Okay, And then now down here, maybe I'll want another curve shape. So maybe I'll click and drag. Now, maybe I'll click and drag here, or maybe I'll just click. Maybe for this one, I want it to go up and then go flat again at the bottom. Or maybe I'll make even kind of a weird ziggy zag shape, right? Something like this. Now, if I want to hold down shift, it'll actually snap. Notice it's snapping to the grid. So if I hold shift, I can make a nice flat surface on the bottom if I want. It's not going to be super important for what we're doing right now, but we'll just do that. Now, when I want to stop drawing, I can just right click and it'll stop. Now, I'm using a pen tablet and a trackpad on a laptop, so my hand gestures are a little bit funky, but just by right-clicking, it'll stop drawing. All right, so there I've created my line. Now, this line, oops, I don't want to draw another one. So this line, and I'll come up here and either pick the Select tool, so I can select it, or the Move tool if I want to move it around. Um, that'll also let me select and deselect it easy. This is the line I've created. Now notice it's nice and flat. It's only in one viewport. You can see perspective. There it is. But I'm not going to modify it again. When working in 2D shapes, you want to avoid this viewport right now. Like, it's going to cause a lot of trouble with our modifiers. So, the reason why we like to, I like to work with 2D splines is because there's some really cool tricks to do some new things, number one. And number two, it's a great way to show off modifiers. So I've created this line. Now let's turn it into a 3D model. I'm going to come over here to the Modify tab, which is right next to the little plus sign, which is the Create tab. If you hover your mouse, it'll tell you that. Here's the Modify tab. The Modify tab kind of looks like a macaroni piece in a box or a cage. Um, sometimes some versions of Macs have this looking kind of like a blue rainbow is what I used to call it, but it looks more mac like macaroni right now. All right, so I'm here I can see my line. Now the line is actually made up of three pieces. These are the components that make up our two-dimensional shape in 3D. Vertex, which are our points, and you can see I can, with the Move tool selected, I can come in and actually move them. Again, I'm working in my 2D view. That's going to be important for keeping it making sense and logical. And you can see I can kind of move these handles to change the curve. I can move the position of the vertex. I can make lots of adjustments pretty easily with this. Again, under vertex. Now vertex are the points. Segment is the part in between. It's the interpolated line, if you will. Um, the piece that goes between one vertex and the other. And then the entire part of a shape is called a spline. Now, for this shape, there's just one. So spline is going to select everything. But think of like the letter O. If you use the text tool to create a letter O and converted it to an editable spline, like this is, the outer edge would be one spline, but the inside circle would be another spline. So again, this one is going to select, select everything that's connected in one line. Now if you also notice, notice this one vertex is yellow and the rest are white. That's our starting vertex. Now that's not always something you'll need. But occasionally, if you're doing animation or different things, it's important to note where your starting vertex is. The good news is, if you don't like it here, you can make any vertex basically your starting vertex. All right. Uh, so on a closed shape, you can pick any of them. On a line like this, I can change it from this one to this one. All right. So let's go ahead and add our modifier. So I'm going to go in here. Now, this is where the real power of 3ds Max lives. It is in our modifier list. Look how many modifiers there are, right? It's crazy how many modifiers there are. And every version of Max, they add more. Now, I'll tell you this. Some modifiers are made to do very specific things for specific industries. So there are a lot of modifiers that you'll probably not use, maybe ever. So keep that in mind. Again, this is all the modifiers available. Some of the modifiers only work with 3D shapes. Some of the modifiers only work with 2D shapes, so keep that in mind as well. We're going to be using one that works with a 2D shape called Lathe. 
Now, if you hit L, it'll jump down to lathe as well, or you can scroll down and find it. Now, you can see, with just adding that modifier, bang, now I've got a 3D shape. And this is not, if we look in the perspective view, we can see it real well, but this is not the shape that I necessarily meant to make. Okay, for a lamp, it looks okay and interesting, but see how it crosses over itself? That's kind of funky, and I don't want that. Obviously, a lamp in real life wouldn't go all the way to connect it in the middle. Um, it'd fall apart. So I'm going to change it. So what I'm going to do is, under the Lathe tool, I'm going to click Axis. And again, in that same viewport I drew it in, and that's important, I'm going to move it over. You can see you can move it one way or the other to create a shape. Now this is actually closer to the shape that I originally wanted. But notice that mine is dark. If I go this way, it looks solid. This way it looks dark and shaded. That's because it's inside out. When you create a shape like this, you're generating three geometry out of math. But the geometry itself doesn't necessarily know what you intended to be the inside and the outside. If you think of a game, if you've ever played a game where you fell through the ground, or played with somebody who wasn't a very fair sport and they fell through the ground and they could shoot people from underneath the ground just like that in 3d 3d polygons only render or really have surface on one side the other side is see-through so this is max's way of telling me it's inside out i'm seeing the interior of the shape and it's shaded because it's the inside but that's a super easy thing to fix so i'm going to come over here under my parameters where I have all my great information about this modifier and each modifier is going to have its own parameters so keep in mind this menu will completely change depending on which modifier you have but it'll always show you the different options you have for the modifier and a modifier will always change the geometry or surface or elements and parameters of the object you apply it to okay I know it's a lot to take in. I'm doing a lot of talking. Again, all I've really done is draw a line and add a modifier. So we haven't done a lot. So don't, if you're feeling a little overwhelmed, don't worry. Now here, I'm gonna click flip normals and you're gonna see now the inside's the outside and the outside was the inside, so flip back. Now, if I come back up here and I pull it the other direction, notice the shading swaps because this is how I wanted my shape to look. Now I can make it wider or thinner Again, I can really modify that. Now the lathe modifier gets its name from an old woodworking tool that people would use to create really cool things like table legs or baseball bats or anything that has a unified roundness to it. They would spin a log and actually cut that edge. The line we created is the edge they cut. So you could bring in a picture of a ball bat and if you traced half of the model and lathed it, you'd get a ball bat. If you brought in a picture of a glass, you could tr actually trace that edge and create that glass. So if you wanted to make something specific, you would just need to create that edge. Now what's cool, why people like 3ds Max versus other 3D modeling programs is because of these modifiers. And this is why. Notice I can go back to line. Here's my modifier, go back to line. Now I can hit this little test tube looking icon, show end result, and it'll show what it looks like after the modifier but I'm editing below it now some modifiers will actually edit the geometry to a point where you can't go back without messing things up if that ever happens max will pop up a warning but notice it didn't give me one so what I can do is I can actually edit this shape in live time so I can go okay I like that maybe there maybe I want to bring this in a little bit more this is way too far out for what I was thinking so maybe I'll bring that in bring this one in as well I kind of like that zigzaggy at the bottom, but I don't want that base so big. Notice you can see I'm literally modifying and changing the shape to whatever I want. And I'm being able to see how it looks, again, in live time, which is really neat. It's generating that geometry as we go along. You know, I can create something really visually interesting, maybe like that. A little like pseudo bowl looking funky thing. Um, it's your lamp. So, you know, feel free to make it however you want, whatever shape appeals to you. All right, so I like this. Now, it does have an open end, okay? If I go to lathe, you can see, come on, there we go. 
Um, I could do well core, but it doesn't. It's not going to really cap it. And it says it's got caps, but it really doesn't. But that's okay. It's super duper easy to add those caps. So if I have that, I might have a hole at the top, hole at the bottom. <coughs> that's fine. We can add another modifier to this. And I'm going to hit E. I'm going to add the edit poly modifier. That's going to basically make this a new piece of geometry. Now, this is one of those modifiers where if I go back now, I might get a warning. So, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and go to border under edit poly. Um, actually, edit poly converts this. I'm jumping ahead. Like, I want to make my lamp. Um, converts this from the object it was into a new editable 3D geometry. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this and go into a lot more detail with Edit Poly in uh, the ne like the next lesson. But for right now, I just want to show you that I can just simply come up here to Edit Poly, go to Border, and then it'll select the edge on the top and bottom. And I just want to show you how easy it is. I can just go click Cap and click Cap and fill them in. Now. There's a whole lot going on here. We're going to cover all this real soon. Again, I just want to show you how easy it is to fix that issue. So I've had some students in the past kind of see that hole, be overly worried about that hole, and think it's going to be very difficult to fix. It's not. It's literally just one button. But now that I've changed the geometry of this shape, right, like I've added the caps on the bottom. Sorry, sometimes your view cube does some funky things, especially if you're working with a tablet like I am. All right. But now that I've modified that, if I go back to this, I'm going to get that error I mentioned, right? I said some modifiers will give you an error if you're going to be uh, pulling the blocks out of the bottom of the Jenga stack, right? That's basically what it's saying. It's saying, hey, you know, you're getting ready to mess up the geometry that's required for this modifier to function. Are you sure you want to do that? And even it says that a modifier exists in the stack depends on topology. Changing parameters may have undesirable effects. You know, are you sure you want to continue? Now, my suggestion to you, I've been using Max for a long, long time. I never turn this off. Yep, I know what I'm doing, and I never turn it off, right? So um, I would suggest to you, don't turn it off. Make sure that's on because... You want to be able to get that warning when you need it. Now, I'm going to hit no because it's going to mess up if I do it, right? So I'm going to hit no, and it's going to go back to in here, and you're fine. I can go to vertex and move them, but notice I'm stuck with this kind of shape. The only way to really change the entire lamp piece is to go back. Now, I could delete this modifier if I wanted to change it. I could hit delete. And there we go. Now I can go back to Vertex and say, okay, well, I'll just want to make this one in a little bit to make it a little smaller or something. Maybe I want to make this one a little bit different too. Ah, my tablet's fighting me. It's a little bit easier with a mouse, but maybe I'll use my trackpad. All right. So you can see here, again, I can modify that shape. I can go back and do whatever I want with it. We'll even give it that weird cup and then now go back up to the stack and pick that edit poly modifier. Again, I'm going to have to redo exactly what I did, grab those edges and cap them. But you can see here, there's my shape. Now again, it's as simple as kind of that. Now, this video is basically just to show you how this uh, line tool works how the lathe modifier works, and then to show you that even though we're going to go more in depth in edit poly, so don't worry, I know there's lots of stuff there, um, I want to show you how easy it is to do things like add that, cap those holes. So if you ever have a hole in a piece of geometry, it's literally a button to click and it'll fill it. So not something we really need to worry about. And you can see here we've created our 3D shape, our advanced shape. Looks pretty good and even filled it. All right, I'm going to stop this video. We'll continue on and create the rest of our lamp.